helpful to see the whole of Genesis 3 through 11 as the story of how sin and evil corrupted God's good world. Uh, We, especially in Protestant tradition, typically focus primarily on chapter 3, but the story has been progressing and sin has been escalating from the individual to the family to whole cultures to this now in chapter 11, an entire people are coming together in opposition to God and what God does about it is uh, really important for the whole rest of the story. Genesis 11, 1 through 9. All people on the earth had one language and the same words. When they traveled east, they found a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them hard. They used bricks for stone and asphalt for mortar. They said, come, let's build for ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky. Let's make a name for ourselves so that we won't be dispersed over all the earth. Then the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the humans built. And the Lord said, There is now one people, and they all have one language. This is what they have begun to do, and now all that they plan to do will be possible for them. Come, let's go down and mix up their language there, so they won't understand each other's language. Then the Lord dispersed them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore it is named Babel, because there the Lord mixed up the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over all the earth. Uh, Okay, so there's a lot of great repetitions and observations to make here. One, there's this uh, repetition of the oneness. There's one language. They have the same words uh, as they are are coming together as one to build this city. And then the Lord again kind of repeats that. There's one people and they have one language. Uh, And that kind of sets off a contrast to the dispersion. Their, their fear here is that they would be dispersed and God comes to mix up their language so that they would be dispersed over all the earth. And then it says, and then they were dispersed. So that kind of dispersion flows out of this oneness. They were one together, but then the, the Lord comes and disperses them. Uh, what else? They come and they build, they have bricks so that they can build a tower to top in the, with its top in the sky that's the word also for heaven but so basically they're just saying let's build a, a tall tower as tall as we can go with this new technology called brick uh, and mortar and see what see what we can do and their purpose you can see kind of the the purpose of them building this tall tower is specifically to make a name for ourselves and so that we won't be dispersed so they're thinking of their name Um, and this fear of being dispersed. Come down, God mixes up their language. Okay, so first, right off the bat, I like to just point out there's some humor in this passage, Uh, ancient humor anyway. You might not laugh, but I did. The, uh, the, right here, these people have come together, uh, and they're building this tower with its top into the heavens, into God's realm, and they want to make a name for themselves, and they think they're something special. And then right here, the Lord has to come down to even see what they're up to. Uh, It's a little ancient humor for you. They think that they've created a name for themselves, that there's something so special, and God's like, I can't really see what you're doing all the way down there. Let me come down and check this out. So anyway, you can laugh if you want. But God comes down to see what they've done, and what he sees is disturbing. He says, well, this is what they've begun to do. Now all that they plan to do will be possible for them. What's going on here? It's not that God wants to just keep humans down and not let them succeed. It's that the way that they're doing it and the thing that they're after is going to be so detrimental to God's ultimate purposes and plans that he has to put a stop to it. Um, this image of being one of oneness of unity feels like it's good, but we could look at it a little deeper. Uh, the 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 way that they have unity right now is all wrong. Uh, in today's language, we might call this, you know, an echo chamber or group think. Uh, these are people that look and think and act and speak just like each other. And because of that, because of that sort of um, degrading unity, the, th- the only thing that they come up with is let's make a name for ourselves. Uh, this dispersion here, feels like maybe a bad thing, but let's go back really quick. Uh, all the way back, several weeks back, we looked at Genesis 1, 26, and the creation of humans. God made male and female 
as God's image bearers, specifically to be fertile and multiply and fill the earth. Humanity's original design and mandate was to disperse, was to fill the whole earth. And the problem in Babel is that they're not doing that. They're not filling the earth. They're trying to build themselves up and create a tower. I also like to point out here, thinking back several weeks, uh, we talked about what does it mean to be made in God's image and how no individual can fully image God. It created it in the beginning, there was a diversity of, of gender, male and female together. Uh, God created them to be the divine image uh, so that they could go out and fill the earth. And I would say that the same thing is here and taking it to a new level. It's now we need men and women together equally as partners and yet within their diversity to image God. Here, we need to get out of our echo chambers, out of our group think. Uh, I need people that are not just like me, that don't speak and look and think about the world just like me to fully image God in the world. One of the, the things I think is valuable to point out here, this, uh, this story of Babel is often described as a curse, the curse of language or something like that. And the word curse never shows up in this story. I don't think God dispersing them was a curse. Maybe it's a little tough love. I, I often think of this as, uh, you know, tough love or God is playing the long game here. Yes, it's going to cause some, some problems, some strife in the world. Uh, but now to, to fully pursue unity and the purposes of God as we are dispersed across the world, it's going to create uh, tension and it's going to create the need to find ways to translate and to learn other languages and other ways of seeing the world. But the, the problem was that they were not dispersing. They were not filling the earth. They were trying to make a name for themselves. And so as much as this is the long game, we're still dealing with uh, the lack of clarity and there's so much confusion and people don't understand one another even to this day thousands and thousands of years later apparently the alternative was even worse as god thought of a people that were in this echo chamber thinking and looking and talking all the same what they were going to do was so detrimental to god's ultimate purposes in the world that creating language and dispersing them was even better well a big application for me from this week's text is to really examine my own um, propensity for echo chambers. I like to be around people that look and think and talk just like me, and it's really important. Uh, from the beginning of the story to the end, God has this heart for diversity, for multi-ethnicity, for um, seeing life through other people's eyes. And so I need to make sure that I'm not just around people just like me. That means men and women coming together. That means different races and ethnicities and cultures. And maybe there's a, a challenge for each of us this week to examine. Are, are there any areas of my life where I've allowed myself to be surrounded by this echo chamber and get swept away with this group think and uh, actually I'm opposed now to what God actually has for me in the world. How can I reach out across boundary lines and have dialogues with people that are not like me?